Hey, Charlie Hall. Phil, how are you? I'm doing great. We need to get in this car and get on the run right away. Uh, this is a little game that I got to check out a couple of weeks ago called Overland. Um, I am so excited about this game. Like a month or two ago, I saw like some concept art or something floating by in my Twitter feed. I haven't seen Heidner hair of it since. What is this thing? So I'm, I'm glad that you are already familiar. I wasn't familiar at all when I went to see it, and I came out of this meeting a true believer. Uh, so this is a game about the apocalypse. Um, the apocalypse has happened. You see that's Milo there. And we're playing as Sandra, who is an intense nihilist 31-year-old. Um, the apocalypse has happened. We need to escape. We need to get on the road. Um, we are going to be traveling overland, which is where the name overland comes from. Um, and you're seeing, you see over in the, uh, the right-hand side of the screen here, there's something popping out of the ground. Um, and the more time we spend on this map, the further out of the ground that thing is going to get. Um, and that's, that's going to be the thing that we're kind of avoiding. Uh, it's not like it's, it's a... It's a scenario where you're trying to survive at in the end times, but it's not zombies. It's not it's not anything we're used to. It's this weird new take on uh, apocalypse, I guess, or post-apocalypse. Well, I don't like the I don't like the looks of that thing at all. Is it like this little legged crabbed snaily thing? Yeah, it's it's they're weird and hard to describe because they're not like they're, they they certainly take influences from a lot of things, but those the creatures are something unique they're new which i kind of like uh so what you're going to see here is when you escape a map you get the uh when you escape a a single area map you get this kind of over map overworld map and different areas are going to have different things going on there's useful items here in ashland and it's a short drive um but i think we're going to actually head over to madison rather than ashland okay um, and in fact in fact i may even just skip ahead entirely um so I'm jumping, jumping around a little bit throughout this. Yeah, let's just go over to Reinhold. Let's go right there. Um, so this big map kind of represents a biome in the game, uh, which in this case is the suburbs, which is the starting biome. Um, at the end of each biome, you're gonna you're gonna hit these maps that are sort of like in boss encounters almost. Uh, so the way that a boss encounter in this game works, it's not like an actual enemy, giant enemy that you need to fight. It's you hit a roadblock and you need to get out and figure out how do we get past this without dying. Well, but wait a minute. Each of these little play fields are like barely like 20 grid spaces wide. They're That's tiny. It? They're tiny. Um, they're tiny, but they are really uh, constantly expanding in terms of gameplay in terms of the stuff that can happen here. Um, there's a lot of new enemies here being introduced. So you see there's a bunch of these small guys here now. There's also a bigger one down there. Um, and the bigger the enemy, the more uh, attacks it's going to take to take them out. Um, and it, oh my goodness, okay. Uh, so you see there, I killed that enemy, but uh, it sent out sound waves, and that brought a bunch of more enemies starting burrowing to the surface. Oh, goodness. And that thing's, like, got wings on it now? Is it hatching? What is happening? It's That's just a bigger one. That's just, like, like the it's it's growing. Its form is, is growing. Um, pushing that uh, pushing that dumpster also caused, created sound, which caused uh, another enemy to start burrowing up. Um, here I'm having this character run over and grab gas, because one of the key things with the game is... So as you're going from these maps to maps, you're collecting resources... And gas, of course, is one of your main resources. You need that to continue traveling. That's very important. I mean, you don't you don't want to just get stuck on the road with these creatures. Um, but this is this is kind of what the game is. It's turn based, and you're just oh, there's a big one over there popped out. Uh, we got to get out of here. <laughs> um, and and as you go, as you as you progress through these biomes, um, this is like this is the last map of the the easy biome. Mm -hmm. Each biome is going to add more enemy types, it's going to add more obstacles, it's going to add new things that make it harder, and if you haven't been uh, very smart and careful in how you are uh, progressing and gathering resources and saving, uh, you're not going to have a good time the further along you get. <laughs> um, it's sort of, it's cool because it reminds me of something like FTL, um, in, in that style of like... Uh, 
you know, slowly progressing through this run that gets more and more difficult and trying to, like, save up resources and everything. Um, but it's such a completely different setting from that. Well, but also, my question to you is, is this a narrative game? Is this a procedurally generated game? Is this like a choose-your-own-adventure kind of thing? Like, it's, where did this It's procedurally come from? generated. Get out! Yeah, all of these are procedurally generated. Um, my understanding from talking to the developers is they're based on... Uh, it, it, basically, their system pulls in a bunch of different parts um, and puts them together. Uh, so the number of combinations that you can have is, you know... They, they said it's not infinite, but it is near infinite. <laughs> um, it is close enough to infinite that you pr it's entirely likely that you'll never run into the same scenario. Um, so here we are in the grasslands. This is the second biome. Things are getting a little bit more difficult. There's more big creatures. There's fire now, um, which is something that we'll start playing around with. And you're going to notice on this map, there's a pupster. There's a, a little pup. A pupster. You see that puppy, that pup dog right up there. Aww. Adorable. Aww. Um, we, we have three people with us. Um, we actually only have three seats in this car. Uh, so well, if we want to take... going to have to stay behind for, for the puppy, Phil. If we want to take this dog, we're going to have to leave someone behind. I mean, um, that's pretty clear cut. Let's just make, let's just draw straws here. So the cool thing about this, uh, this is something that you can, you can get vehicles. You can find vehicles that have more seats. Um... Oh, that guy got set on fire. Uh, <laughs> oh, another cool thing, the fire is going to move as well based off of, like, wind patterns. And so if it's by tall grass and the wind is blowing a certain way, that tall grass is going to set on fire. And then the grass next to that is going to set on fire. Um, so you can, like, get in pretty crazy situations with these, uh, with fire on the maps. Um, but yeah, so as, as you as you go, you will encounter characters. You'll find new characters. You have to decide who you're going to take with you, who you're not. Um, you can see, like, this Merle here has CPR training and Charismatic, um, which are two, you know, stats that are very useful. Uh, charismatic means that people are going to like him um, and be more likely to help us. Uh, CPR training means that he can do some first aid stuff. Uh, but you have to make choices about who you want to keep with you and who you don't. The really cool part is, as you progress in the game, people who you've left behind can show up again. Really? And they're not going to be happy that they got left behind. Oh, that's amazing. So there's, you're making choices that, like, do I leave this person behind? And if I do, is that going to come back and hurt me later on in the game? Oh, I'm getting I'm getting delicious notes of, like, some Banner Saga. <laughs> yeah, with like, a little bit of XCOM. A little bit of that? XCOM, yep. There's, there's, oh, there's, there's Dead of Winter, the board game in here, but it's... Uh, so it's, it's topography. I love this. It's great that you bring up uh, Dead of Winter. The the uh, and this is why kind of one of the reasons I wanted to bring you onto this video. When I saw this game and talked to the developers about it, they brought up Dead of Winter specifically, and also a couple of other board games, uh, Pandemic as well. Um, they said that this game is very much inspired by their love of board games. Um, love it, and and that they wanted to figure out a way to bring some of what they enjoy about board games into a video game. Well, because the, the thing that's so great about a game like Dead of Winter or, for instance, the XCOM board game, right? Yeah. Or another game like, um, um, I'm trying to think of it. I generally call it Scotch and Zombies, but it's not called Scotch and Zombies. It's called, uh, yeah, anyway, edit that out. But anyway, it, it's those moments where your, your group is cornered. There's nowhere else to run, but that's the story of that game, right? That five minute, that one turn at yeah. the table where you're all working together and you're on the edge of your seat. You flip the whole table when it all goes wrong. But so, it's every round for this thing. So a couple things happened here. Uh, we left that person behind and they said few figures, which I liked. Uh, we're now in the mountains, which is the third biome, but we're out of gas. Uh-oh. And what happens when you're out of gas, uh, if you can't make it to the next stop... Um, you basically get, uh, they, they compared it to, like, a, uh, a d and style, like, saving throw. Like, uh, you get to, you get put onto a random map where hopefully you will be able to find some gas and escape. Um, if you can't find any gas, you can also escape on foot. Um, but that's gonna get real bad real fast. Um, yeah, no kidding. One thing you can see in the right corner here, uh, there's a little bit of, like, a shimmery thing. Um, it's, it's kind of hard to make out on this, but like just shimmering next to one of the enemies here, 
Mm -hmm. That is, uh, there are these weird things that start showing up in the mountains where if you step on it or if an enemy steps on it, uh, you just get teleported to a random point on this this map here. Um, so now they're throwing like stalker elements into this? Yeah, there's like weird stuff going on with this game. And that's one of the ways, like I said, where they, they're kind of increasingly making things more complex. Um, and then Very you can see those really long legged enemies as well. That's mm -hmm. a new type where uh, most of the enemies in the game get one movement per turn. Um, humans get two movements per turn. Those long legged guys get two movements per turn as well. Um, Very interesting. So is this PC only? Is this going to be on console somehow? Tablet? Like, where are they going with this? So it is launching on PC. Mm -hmm. um, it is also confirmed to be coming to PS4. Um, and they did tell me, uh, I think they said they have not confirmed 100% that it's going to be coming to, uh, to tablets. But I think they said that as they were working on the game, uh, you know, making it in such a way that it would make sense on tablets is certainly part of their uh, thinking process. So I think it, I, I think it, it makes sense that this will probably come to tablets eventually, right? So where where are we trying to get? What's the end look like? Though? So the I, the idea is uh, they they said that the idea is essentially going from the east coast, from like the suburbs is kind of their idea of the east coast to the west coast. Um, so you go to the suburbs, you go through the grasslands, you go through the mountains. Uh, the fourth biome they mentioned to me was desert. Um, and then I believe there are two or three more biomes after that, which they did not tell me what they were. They said they don't want to spoil the surprise. Um, but they did say that things get pretty weird. Um, <laughs> and, and, of course, much more difficult. Uh, you can see at this point, like, there's really big guys here. Um, and these really big guys take two hits to kill. Um, which is just like, we don't even want to mess with that. Uh... It's starting to get rough, let's say. But this is this is this is kind of it. This is the game. Um, you're going to be continuing to go through these because it's procedurally generated. Every time you start out, um, you're going to get totally new maps. You're going to get totally new characters. Uh, there will be the L XCOM element of being able to name your characters. Cool, um, cool. So you know all of that, all that stuff that you like in those types of games is going to be here as well. And I just think, uh, I think they've got something really cool here. All right, so when's it out? When's it out? Next month? Uh, 2016? I don't believe that they have a date yet at the moment. Uh, but it is 2016. Okay. Um, they, they said they are getting closer. Um, this, is, this is by far the, the most complete build that they've had thus far. There's still some bugs and some things that they are working out, and there's still some major systems that they want to add in, like being able to name your characters and like having a little bit more interaction between the characters. Boo, um, one fewer bug right there. Yeah, yes, absolutely. But also fire kind of in the way of us leaving, so that's that's <laughs> bad. Uh, but yeah, so it, it will be next year, and by all accounts, I think this this seems like a game that I'm going to spend a lot of time with next year. It just seems... It seems like it's really going to scratch that FTL itch that I've been, uh, I've been wanting to get scratched for a while. Yeah, it looks like something nice to keep, uh, I don't know, maybe on the other screen while, while you're doing a long conference call. I don't know, you know, something to just kind of pick at throughout the day. This is great. That's not something you would do. No, certainly not. Okay, good. You're playing another game on the screen right now, aren't you? What are you talking about? Uh, I'm, exploring, I'm exploring an uncharted system in Elite. Leave me alone. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> thanks for stopping by, Charlie. All right, Phil. Talk to you soon.